I have found myself doing a lot of smaller carvings lately. Most of those have been deer antler, but that doesn't pick up as well on the camera. So I decided to use some boxwood and carve a raven. What I'm doing now is just placing my stop cuts so that I can hog out all of the material around the raven itself. Apparently, I forgot to hit record when I did the majority of that hogging. But you can see that I've been able to clear out most of the material and the piece that I'm carving on is about the size of a pendant or an ornament. Once you've established the different areas so the bird is free from the background then you can start working on definition of the carving itself. So, because the raven's looking over its right shoulder, I'm placing a stop cut where the back would come up into the head. And I'm doing some rounding of the body itself. You don't round the entire piece, really. It's just gonna be the edge because you're giving the impression of depth. And the tool I'm using right now is one of the tools I've made myself over the years. When you get into smaller carvings, a lot of times you just need to get creative. And here's another tool I made myself. It's used primarily for scraping between my tools and then some palm tools. I'm able to establish that definition. I like the way that beak's turning out. What you're seeing now is the V tool going in and cleaning up and really making certain areas stand out more. That's a scorp that I made. And all I'm doing is pulling back and it's shaving off just little, little curls. You'll see the largest portion of the raven is really untouched. It's just those edges so that I can create the illusion of roundness. And I also made it to where the tail comes down and over the border. So the edge of the wood, you can see where it's framed. Well, I didn't put the tail behind that. I had it come over to help add the perception of depth. Now I'm using another one of the handmade scraping tools to go in, remove tool marks, saw marks, adding additional definition around the head and the body and the tail. That's one of the good things about boxwood. Being a hardwood, it really holds a lot of detail and you can go in and just remove small amounts until you're satisfied. Now I'm going into the third layer down, which is around the, the claws and the feet, grabbing the limb. Of course, when I do that, I look at the rest of the carving and that'll take me around to see other areas that I need to clean up. I want the overall piece to be uniform.
now that I have the shape that I want. I'm cleaning up using that scorp again. It helps to smooth the piece so that I can go in and redefine areas that I need to add more detail to. And once that's done, now I wanted to add collar to this piece because, well, boxwood, it doesn't always have a lot of characteristics in it. This piece didn't. So to help the piece stand out, using a detail brush, some high carbon ink to go in and just start adding color to it. Don't always like to do this, but sometimes it's, it's needed. And for this one it was. Some reflective blue highlights in the feathers. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, and if I've earned it, please like, share, and subscribe.